Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton and beyond. On this week's show, we spend time in Bangkok with Bodhi Nisara and Nitpipon Pongpapet as Thailand's men's doubles pair tells us about their ambitions in making the big time. We also visit Seoul to find out how the Korean national team is shaping up under new head coach Kang Kyung Jin. The men's doubles game delivers some of the most spectacular action the sport has to offer. Skill and tactics aside, the outcome of matches are often decided by how well players are in sync with their partners. Thailand's Bodhan Nisara and Nipipong Pongpapet are an example of a pair reveling in their partnership. Runners-up at last year's Yonex Denmark Open and Yonex French Open, the country's top men's doubles act is growing from strength to strength since their debut in 2015. We are playing better together and we continuously encourage each other. It was a matter of just getting out there to play and enjoy the game. When we're able to do that, the performance will reflect that. We don't expect much from each other than that. I like to tell myself to just enjoy the game as I don't want to put pressure on myself. If I do put pressure on myself, I will not play well. We were in the land of smiles recently to find out how things were coming along for the world number 17 duo. It may have taken Bodin and Nipipong over a year to show some solid progress, but their recent achievements are commendable, given that the former had only just returned to top flight action after serving a two-year suspension. In 2013, Bodin was involved in an unfortunate on-court altercation with a former teammate that resulted in an international ban. Sitting out of competitive badminton hadn't been easy, but the painful experience has made him treasure his beloved sport even more. I had to stop playing for two years, so I turned to coaching instead during that period. When I saw my friends playing in the national team, it made me want to return to playing. I would want to know if I could still cut it at the international level. When my suspension was over, I was selected back into the national team and I realized I could still play. I was delighted to be back playing in the national team because it proved that I was still good enough. During my suspension, it was hard watching my national teammates going to tournaments and I couldn't. Knowing that I used to be one of them, going to tournaments, it wasn't easy for me. I was waiting to make my comeback and when I did, everything was back to normal and I was happy. Yeah, okay, happy. It was April 2015 when Bowdoin made his long-awaited comeback, joining forces with Nipipong at the Sky City New Zealand Open. They didn't make it past the second round, but both players took heart from their first outing together. I was excited because I was competing again after serving such a long ban. At the start, I had high expectations, but we lost out to the Chinese pair. We hadn't combined well yet as our partnership was new. Even so, it was a narrow defeat. I also had ambitions to go far. For Thailand, we only have a couple of men's doubles pairs out there, so I wanted to do well. When the pressure was too much, our performances didn't turn out well. So we helped each other improve and our performances steadily got better. Although Bodin and Nipipong knew they needed time to gel, it wasn't long before they saw results. Five months into their partnership, the Thais celebrated their first triumph at the Babalat Kharkiv International. The Bahrain International Challenge title followed and the Rio 2016 Olympics was within reach. Despite chasing hard for a spot in Rio, the Thai men came up short in securing a ticket to Brazil. Missing out on badminton's biggest stage was tough, but the pair weren't about to wallow in despair. When we won in Ukraine, we began to believe more in ourselves. 
We didn't need to go through qualifying rounds anymore when we competed at World Super Series tournaments. However, that year was the Olympic qualification period, so whichever tournament we went, the matches were very tough. When we didn't make the cut, I was disappointed. But at the end of the day, life goes on, so we continued with our training. There are many more tournaments out there we could compete in. The Olympics is huge and it may be the ultimate goal, but we needed to look forward to other tournaments for us to stay competitive. With the pressures of qualifying for Rio over, Bodin and Nippong regrouped and focused on enjoying the game once more. It worked wonders as the Southeast Asians sailed into the finals day of the World Super Series tournaments in Denmark and France. As soon as our journey to get to the Olympics was over, we relaxed. We kept our focus, but there wasn't pressure. We reminded ourselves we just needed to enjoy playing. We just focused on playing our best. It didn't matter whether we were winning or losing, that wasn't important. Our performances improved and the results showed. We weren't really expecting anything and took it match by match, tournament by tournament. Before season's end, Bodin and Nippepong climbed to a high of number 15 in the world rankings. The Thai pair are now set on harnessing their newfound confidence as they go in hunt of their first major crown. This year, I hope to move our ranking up to the top 10 or top 5. I would like to take each match at a time, especially when I'm playing at the bigger tournaments. I need to focus game after game before I can aim to win the tournament title. Right now, my goal is to win at the All England Championships. Our confidence is definitely building. We've already defeated some of the top pairs. Against the world number one duo, we played all the way to three games and almost won. We've also defeated the world number two pair and the All England champions, so we need to keep believing in ourselves. I don't want to be overconfident, but let's just say we want to win all 13 World Super Series tournaments. <laughs> Conquering every title is perhaps a long stretch, but it's hard to fault athletes who set the bar high, especially for this type pair, who at the moment are enjoying what they do best. And as 2017 shapes into another action-packed year for world badminton, Bodin Asara and Nippipon Pompapet could just be among those making the headlines. Time for some trivia. There are many Chinese players at the elite level, but can you guess who this men's single shuttler is? I was born in China. I am a world and Asian junior champion. I am an Asian Games silver medalist. Have a think and we'll give you the answer after the break. When we return, we check in on the Korea national team and find out their plans for 2017. With digital innovations, shuttle time is now more fun, engaging and accessible than ever. So get connected to BWF's Badminton Schools program. Find out more about BWF's grassroots initiatives on these platforms. Download the app, visit the website and get active on Facebook. Your gateway to shuttle time has never been so easy. Before the break, we asked you to guess who this player is. I was born in China. I am a world and Asian junior champion. I am an Asian Games silver medalist. The answer is Tian Ho Wei. The 25-year-old has been one of China's prominent men's singles players over the last few years. Tian made great strides in 2016. He reached the finals of the Yonex All England Open Championships and the Dubai World Super Series Finals. 
He was unable to get past compatriot Lin Dan in Birmingham as he went down in straight sets. Against Victor Axelsson in Dubai, he was close to clinching his maiden Super Series crown, but lost out to the Dane in the end. 2017 brings a fresh start for Tian Ho Wei as the world number seven continues the hunt for success. 2016 had been a roller coaster year for Team Korea. Boasting a proud Olympic history in the 90s and early 2000s, the East Asians had hoped they could replicate their predecessor's middle success at last year's Summer Games in Rio. Korea had representation in all five disciplines, and their biggest gold medal hope, the men's doubles, were disappointingly knocked out in the quarterfinals. Their saving grace came in women's doubles. Jung Kyun Un and Shin Sung Chan defeated China's Tan Yuen Ting and Yu Yang in the bronze playoff to clinch the only medal in badminton for Korea. Shin and I controlled our game well so that we could reach the semi finals. But I also believe that we achieved good results, partly due to the encouragement we received from our teammates. More heartbreak followed in the period after the games. The strength of the national team took a hit after several of their elite players called time on international badminton. Men's double sensation Lee Yong Day bowed out after the Korea Open, finishing his illustrious career with 43 World Super Series titles. Doubles player Kim Sa Rang also announced retirement post Rio. I wish they had continued to practice with us. It would be good for the young players. But I understand they have their own agenda and ambitions. So it is fine. The senior players who have done so well have now opened the way for the junior players. The regeneration process has started for Korea, with more than 10 junior players selected to the national side earlier this year. 2017 also witnessed a change of the guard in the coaching team. Men's doubles coach Kang Kyung-jin has now taken over at the helm. The 1997 All England champion is confident that his experience as coach and player will benefit the team. I know how to communicate with the players and discuss things with them. As a coach, I've shared their joys and sorrows. I understand their goals and their ambitions. There used to be a number of players with very high world rankings. But now, the majority of these players have retired and young players have come in. We will start from scratch and with a mindset of development. Yu Yeon Song, partner of the retired Lee, paired up with 20-year-old Kim Jae Hwan towards the close of 2016. But finding the right partner for the highly accomplished doubles player will take time. We are still testing our partnership. Nothing is confirmed as we don't know how this will turn out. I will continue with Kim Jae-hwan if things go well. We will make sure that we develop our combination to the maximum. With two top double shuttlers retired from international badminton, the country is eager to find their next title-winning pairs. Although Korea can bank on their current side, they will still need to ensure that the next generation of talent is ready to take over. There are already young shuttlers showing promising signs in their game, but the East Asian nation recognizes they have to be patient and that success will not be in the immediate future. Currently, we have some prominent young players like Kim Won-ho and Kang Ming-hyuk. They are in the third grade of high school and already above 180 centimeter tall. They have a good read of the game. I believe they will be the rising stars of the Korea team. Although known more for their prowess in the doubles format, Korea do have Son Won-ho and Song Ji-hyun flying the flag high in the solo events at the elite level. And the potential for more to join their ranks looks encouraging, with their youngsters doing well in international badminton. Their performance have improved substantially, and if they keep taking part in various tournaments, it will help them develop the game further. 
and allow them to gain more experience. They will then be able to produce better results. Despite the recent shakeup, Korea have proved that they are still one of the best in the business. At the recent Robot Badminton Asia Mixed Team Championships 2017, Korea emerged runners-up, losing to Japan in the final. To stay competitive on the global stage, the nation has shown that they are adept at reinventing themselves. The main focus in their rebuilding is centered on developing the next generation of players. First, the team is made up of young players, so we are not expecting very good performances in the near future. But we are taking it one step at a time in our preparation for the coming Asian Games and the Olympic Games in 2020. I believe we can produce good results in the coming future. You don't have to worry about it. As 2017 continues to unfold, Korea is determined to keep up tradition as one of the heavyweights of badminton. The Koreans have been known to be a resilient side, and the East Asian nation look on course as they plot their next move in the fast-changing and intensely competitive world of the racket sport. After the break, we preview the much-anticipated Yonex All England Open Championships as we look at the contenders for the world's oldest badminton tournament. Get connected with us on social media. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and tell us what you think of the latest news. Or perhaps you just want to leave an encouraging post for your favorite player on Facebook. If you've got any comments or photos, share them with us on these social media platforms. The Yonex All England Open Championships is not only the oldest badminton tournament in the world, but also one of the most prestigious. The 107th edition of the championships takes place at the Barclay Card Arena next week, and the world's finest players will once again descend upon host city, Birmingham. Since the first competition in 1899, the All England has been the stage for the greatest shuttlers of each era. It has this status in the minds of the players that this is something I want to win, this is something I, I really would like to get my name on, on, that, on that trophy. So obviously they, they give that extra effort to, to win it. Um, and, and that obviously brings normally a great com competition where you see great matches. I think players normally do their best every time, but the, the extra uh, little historical uh, notch that, that, that is around the, the Old England makes them maybe go this one extra percent or two percent that creates some very, very nice and historical moments. Badminton Unlimited looks ahead to the highly anticipated 2017 Yonex All England Open Championships with all the facts and figures. No player has retained the women's singles crown since China's Xie Xingfang clinched a hat-trick in 2007. Since then, seven different players have claimed the women's solo title, and with the field more competitive than ever, this discipline will be fiercely contested. Eyeing the prize in Birmingham will no doubt be Carolina Marin of Spain. Without a World Super Series title last year, the Rio Olympic champion will be hoping to kick off her 2017 campaign with a bang. Also looking for glory in England is current world number one, Tai Tzu Ying. The Chinese Taipei player aims to carry forward the form that saw her grab the season-ending Dubai World Super Series Finals crown last year. Likewise, looking to make her mark at the championships is Korea's Sung Ji Hyun. Having climbed to the world number three spot at the close of last season, she believes this could be her year. With this long history and tradition, it's a dream to win this competition. It's my goal to do well, and if I can achieve that, 
I believe I'll get good results. Hot favourites in mixed doubles are world number ones Zheng Suwei and Chen Qingchen. The young Chinese pair blossomed on the international scene last year, bagging three Super Series and four Grand Prix gold titles. 2016 semi-finalists Chris and Gabby Adcock will have home advantage as the English duo aim to reach their first All England final and become the first English champions since Nathan Robertson and Gail Ems took the mixed doubles title in 2005. But watch out for the Indonesians. The Southeast Asian nation has claimed the crown four times in the last five years. Praveen Jordan and Debbie Susanto will be looking to defend their title, while Olympic gold medalists Tontawi Ahmad and Liliana Natsir are in the hunt for their fourth All England victory. In men's doubles, a mouth-watering combination in the form of Malaysia's Tan Bun Hyong and Indonesia's Hendra Setiawan is in business. Both former All England champions, the duo hope to become only the second transnational pair to win the men's doubles title in the history of the competition. Leading Malaysia's charge are Govi Shem and Tanwi Kyung. Buoyed by their silver medal performance in Rio, a first World Super Series title at the Denmark Open and the season-ending Dubai World Super Series finals title, the pair head to the Barclay Card Arena as the world number ones and the top seeds. The Danes will rely on veterans Matthias Bow and Carsten Mogensen and Mads Konrad Peterson and Mads Pula Kolding. Both have tricky ties in the first round, especially so for the latter pair, who are facing defending champions Vladimir Ivanov and Ivan Sozanov. Uh, so that's the first big tournament for us in 2017, and we want to, uh, of course, perform well. It's, we were in the semi finals two, two years ago, and it was a very special thing for us. Uh, we want to go even further. We know we have to to be ready from the start because, as we tried last year, we had the the Russians uh, winning the tournament. So, uh, so we need to be ready from from game one. And, and we know if we're ready and, and we we're happy and we we are relaxed, we, we know we can can beat everyone. So hopefully, we'll do that. Japan's Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi are the pair to beat in women's doubles. The world number ones clinched their first All England title last year, and with three further Super Series triumphs to their name from last season, including gold at the Rio 2016 Olympics, the Japanese pair are in pole position to take a second consecutive trophy. Highly rated Chinese duo Chen Qingchen and Jia Yifan will pose a real challenge to the Japanese. With Chinese pairs winning 15 of the last 17 women's doubles finals, the fifth seeds hope to continue that run this year. Last year's semi-finalists Christina Pedersen and Camilla ritter Yule will be looking to go one further this time round. The second seeds are determined to chase the elusive All England crown after grabbing European gold and claiming Olympic silver last year. Since the turn of the millennium, China has clinched the men's solo title more times than any other nation. The men's singles field includes the likes of six-time winner Lin Dan, last year's finalist Tian Ho Wei, and Olympic champion Chen Long. Malaysia's singles ace Li Chong Wei is also seeking a successful start to the new season. With Lin Dan and the world number one in different halves of the draw, badminton fans can look forward to a tantalizing prospect of the two legends going head-to-head -head in the final. However, Li will possibly have an earlier challenge in the form of world and Olympic champion Chen Long. The Danes also have a strong contingent. Veteran Hans Christian Wittingus can beat the very best when he turns on the style. World number two Jano Jorgensen will pose a strong challenge and so will Olympic bronze medalist and Dubai World Super Series finals champion, Victor Axelsson. One of the most important things is to stay injury free. So hopefully I can continue uh, with my, my good training and uh, get in really good uh, shape for the, uh, for the All England in 2017. Be prepared for an explosive start to the first MetLife BWF World Super Series event of the 2017 season with all the biggest badminton stars from around the globe at the All England Championships, we can be guaranteed of high intensity, fast paced and top class badminton action.
Before we go, let's take a quick look at how the international circuit is shaping up with the Badminton Unlimited calendar. Next week on Badminton Unlimited, we walk down memory lane with Denmark head coach Kenneth Jonasson as he shares with us the highs and lows of his playing days. See you next week.